I've been in Christian ministry since 1994. For some, that's a long time. For others, it's a short time. But over the years, I can tell you that I do not believe everything exactly as I did back in 1994. My church has a radio broadcast on Sunday mornings, and many times on the way to church, I look in the rearview mirror and see my son looking back at me from the back seat and grinning as I cringe upon hearing something on the radio that I've said or preached within the last 11 and a half years that I pastored this church. Many of you know that I come from a strong, independent, fundamental Baptist background. I was a hardcore, independent, fundamental Baptist before I really knew what one was. I was one because the people around me were, and that's what I was told to be. And everyone who wasn't was a heretic or a false prophet or an apostate or deceived or just simply lost. Yep, that's where I came from. That's how many in that tribe operate. Therefore, it should come as no surprise when I say that my world was rocked when I met another group of independent Baptists who criticized fundamentalists. Because fundamentalists are compromisers. That's right. There was a group that agreed in every doctrine, but because we called ourselves fundamentalists, we'd already compromise. For those that don't know, fundamentalism is based on a group of non-Baptists, actually Presbyterians, that sought in 1910 to define and unite sound churches around core doctrinal issues in the fight against progressiveness. The list was known as the Five Fundamentals. And these generally typified Orthodox Christian churches. They are... Biblical inerrancy, divine, the divine nature of Christ, his virgin birth, the resurrection, and his return. But some independent Baptists rejected that term, fundamentalist, because the group that came together included non-Baptist churches. Some of them in the original fundamentalist movement baptized babies. Not only did these fundamentalists associate with non-Baptists, or they were non-Baptists, but they also left out some things. Justification by faith was not listed as a fundamental. Strikingly, the King James Bible wasn't specifically mentioned. The premillennial rapture was not one of them. And baptism by immersion certainly was not one of them. Now, even though the church I came out of held to every one of those beliefs, here's a group that criticized because we called ourselves fundamentalists while they held to that insurmountable high ground known as... Fight for it! Bible believers. I am not, nor have I ever been, and never will be a fundamentalist. I'm a Bible believer. For those of you that don't know where the term fundamentalist came from, it was a term of compromise from the very beginning. That's right. IFBs eating IFBs over nomenclature, nuances, and platitudes. Both factions agreed in principle, but both had so defined themselves into corners that a conversation could not be had. The Bible believers rejected the fundamentalist term because they believed the whole Bible. More on that later. My home church where I served as a youth pastor and then as assistant pastor was founded by another Baptist church back in the 1950s. But I found out that there was one group of Baptists that did not consider us true Baptists because we were not a church plant from the right kind of Baptists. These were called Landmarkists or Baptist Successionists. My pastor, a bold, independent, fundamental Baptist and King James Bible preacher, wasn't good enough for some because he had been led to Christ by a godly Methodist pastor in our area. Here again, there was unity in doctrine across the board. But our church was not a true Baptist church because it wasn't founded by a landmarkist or Baptist successionist who could supposedly trace their history through a line of true landmarkist Baptist churches unblemished and untouched by Protestantism. By the way, isn't it something how independent Baptists decry anything associated with Protestants except for the King James Version? On more than one occasion, my pastor had difficulty getting certain evangelists or pastors to come because our name didn't have independent Baptists or independent fundamental Baptists in the name. Now, we were officially a missionary Baptist church. For those that don't know, there are well over 20 types of Baptist subdenominations, and I know I'm going to get comments telling me that Baptists are not a denomination. Nevertheless, we shall endeavor to persevere. Missionary Baptists, when the name first began to be used, identified groups of Baptist churches who would come together for the purpose of supporting missionaries. Do you know what independent Baptist churches call other, in, call other churches that come together to form some sort of convention or fellowship? Compromisers. Many times my pastor would have to convince another brother that our church was independent and not associated with any convention, especially that liberal Southern Baptist convention. 
These were men like Dr. Harold Seitler, who wouldn't sit on a platform with an SBC pastor and would not even go on the stage until that compromiser had come down. No exaggeration. Later, I would go out to pastor an independent Christian church. In the southeastern Piedmont of North Carolina, there are a number of independent Christian churches that were started as part of the Congregationalist movement. That's a Protestant denomination that was Calvinistic in their theology, but believed in the independence of the local church, as Baptists do. When many of these churches began to be folded into the Church of Christ, these churches in this area of central North Carolina chose to remain truly independent. And since the 1950s, most of these churches have more aligned themselves with Baptist doctrine. Some of them became Arminians, others remaining Calvinistic. Just the mention of those two groups is enough to have us all feuding like the Hatfields and McCoys. Is everybody okay? Now, since I've been pastoring this independent Christian church, I've had difficulty getting some men to come because our church didn't have Baptists in the name. Nuances caused unwarranted division. Like in my previous examples, some wouldn't and still won't give me the time of the day because of our name. To further gild the lily, I've had singers and groups that will not come to my church because they are, yep, Bible believers, and they stand unapologetically on the Word of God. But they go sing at charismatic churches and friends churches and Methodist churches and Wesleyan churches, and some of these claim, some of these singers claim to be King James only, and yet they go sing at places where a modern English version is used. And one thing that may be said of many of us is that we can be consistently inconsistent. Now, there's an inconsistent standard. There's an undefined dividing line. And someone is always moving the goalposts. I was raised as a young preacher that we were right in every detail and everyone else was wrong if they disagreed in the smallest part. Then I got upset at the camp down the road for thinking the same way about me as I thought about them. How dare they? I'm thankful for my IFB friends. And I appreciate men like Nathan Cravat and recovering fundamentalists who also point out some of these issues. Now, I'm really going to get slammed for that one. But the truth is, I'm a fundamentalist. But I'm not a militant fundamentalist. I'm a Bible believer. But I also understand that my brother who disagrees with me on a secondary issue is also a Bible believer. We just disagree on the interpretation. But isn't that the problem of it all? For some, there is just simply no, th no such thing as a secondary issue. If you forbid singers to use soundtracks, so be it. If you have talented singers that rely on them and praise the Lord, then, then praise the Lord for technology and for tools. If you believe we're living in the Laodicean age, okay. Of course, I do wish you believed like me that those letters in Revelation were to literal churches and not representative of the history of the church. But at the end of the day, it's not a hill to die on. Most of this stuff isn't. Have your opinions. Voice your opinions. But it would do us all well to cross the aisle and extend the hand of fellowship to our brothers and sisters in Christ who are so closely aligned that we can still fellowship while disagreeing agreeably. So whether you're an Arminian or a Calvinist that might have snuck up in here, I don't think that you think God is stupid. I think that breaking fellowship over things so theologically deep and complex is silly. And when we get to heaven, we'll probably find out that it's not the zero pointers or the five pointers that are wrong that, that are right. They're both wrong. It's the six pointers that are right. Listen up. We need to lighten up and enjoy the fellowship. Else, you're going to have a hard time adjusting when we get to heaven. Now, now, while you're taking your blood pressure medication and trying not to stroke out because of all the things that have triggered you in this video, I'm going to go put on a playlist of great preachers that include Kenny Baldwin, John MacArthur, Leonard Ravenhill, Paul Washer, Bodie Bauckham, Steve Lawson, and John Keeter, and maybe even Tony Hudson. Hey, man! And, as Ronald Reagan said to Mikhail Gorbachev, Tear down this wall. 